The only qualification you need for you to conserve the environment is the fact that you live on this planet. I am Anita Soina, an environmental warrior, an author, and a climate change activist. I'm a fourth year student at Multimedia University of Kenya, pursuing a Bachelor of Arts in PR and Corporate Communication. I'm a 2021 TEDx speaker. I'm also the founder of Spice Warriors organization that deals with environment conservation and educating young people outside the climate movement on why they need to join the climate movement. I'm also founding director of Spice Warriors Kids, which uh, deals with uh, empowering young children and mentoring young children who love nature as well as many other small organizations and companies that we are still coming up with in the organization. I am a millennial on the move. Spice Warriors is an organization that I started uh, at the age of 18, basically to help me uh, champion for environment conservation and also to help me educate other people because I felt the need to work with people. You know, the climate uh, change is something so wide. It's something that doesn't need my effort only. It's something that needs everyone on board. So I started it so that I could be able to uh, influence the youth around me and so that you can work together in making sure that we are championing for conservation. Why environment? Um, in the words of Professor, the late uh, Professor Ongari Madai, who is a role model to all, most of us in conservation, we tend to put the environment last because we think we need to eradicate poverty first. But what you are forgetting is you are not eradicating poverty in vacuum, you are doing it in an environment. So even if I do something else, I'd still come for the environment because you know we can't do anything if the environment is not okay. We feel it's something that needs to be addressed first, no matter what. It it has it just has to come first because. It's, um, it's like the, the surrounding, so it's what will allow us to continue running other activities. As a young person whose future is not promised anymore, I ask you today to stand up against deforestation. I was born 21 years ago in a small uh, village in Bomet County where I grew up uh, with my grandfather. I really loved staying with him and I was his favorite grandchild. And when I was growing up, I was really that kind of hardworking girl when I was young. I wanted to become a lawyer. Everybody in the family knew that I was going to be the next lawyer. And I remember uh, when I was young, something that maybe I can relate to my conservation journey is that my grandfather used to value trees. I can't lie that at that time I understood what it meant. I can't lie that I even I also started doing the same when I was three or four now. But he used to really take care of um, his trees. I joined Kaplongas High School in Bomet County, where I was a member of the scouting club. And in my Form 3, I was an official, I was the chairperson of the scouting club. And at this time, we had started engaging in environmental, uh, in community activities, uh, including planting trees. So at that time, I still used to take care of the trees. By that time, I still did not know the importance of trees as much, apart from what you're told in class when you were young, that it cleans the air and the basics. After high school, I had too much time. And at this time, I really wanted to join politics. I was so much in love with politics. And I think there's something that's just in the family. And it's at this time when I met uh, Eric Masanza, who's my mentor, and also the founder of Spies Without Borders. And I told him that I really need to do, I really need to do something for the society. I want to find my purpose as early as now. And since his organization deals with mentoring young people to discover their purposes and passion, that's how I really discovered um, my passion for conservation. After high school, I got uh, admitted to Multimedia University and I was in Nairobi. And you know, before, before even just uh, getting a direction that now, uh, I have an organization name, so I need to get people so that we move together. I did a lot of things. I started hustling before I even got to 18. And I remember when I just turned 18, I was um, in a record label where I used to help in managing artists' uh, social media pages. And I remember the first time I was asked, can you do this? I said, yes, I can do it. I had never done it before. But since you know you have to make a living in Nairobi and all that, I said, yes, I can do it so that uh, I get trained. And that's how I started um, 
I started uh, working and getting into the entertainment space and after that I moved from one from the record label I also went and started working with the guardian angel who was a very good boss of mine he also supported me a lot in tree growing activities where we used to go uh, when, whenever he planned any event any charity event at a children's home he'd make sure that I also plant trees and he, he would just support me as a boss and then after that now I decided to shift and uh, fully focus on conservation because I couldn't make it. It was so hard that you're working for someone and you're also doing something for yourself. And at the end of the day I could find myself not being able to deliver for both sides. I'm passionate about environment conservation, especially the advocacy part and the tree growing part. I do not have any educational background on the same and that does not make me environmentally unconscious at all because I believe that the only qualification you need for you to conserve the environment is the fact that you live on this planet. When I came to Nairobi for the first time, uh, the activity that I got involved in, in conservation, that was really public and I made it public all over, was a cleanup. I remember it was during the World Cleanup Day and I really shared much about it. We were, we were picking up trash around Kamkunji Market with other stakeholders and I shared it on Facebook. And the first thing my mother told me was, uh, my daughter, Ulienda Nairobi ko kota takataka. And it was really hard because she could even get calls. My mom could get calls from uh, his brothers and maybe uh, some of my uncles that she needs to study first, you know, she needs to focus. And my mom will tell me every day, you know, no, everybody in the family thing, you're not even reading, you're just focusing on, 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 on other things. But later on, Things went well and I thank God that they all support me. I get support from them. The fact that my mom uh, goes on social media, especially Facebook, she finds a post on climate change and she has to tag me below it. And she's always like, Anita, is this what you've been saying? And I really feel good uh, that she supports me. And even uh, some of the relatives that had problems are now supporting what I do. To every parent outside there, if your child is not doing something bad, if it's something good that uh, impacts the society, if it's something good that touches our life, just make sure you support them. It, it may not be financially, but don't discourage them. Don't tell them that you need to do this first because, you know, some of us may not be book smart, but or we can be book smart, but still the street, we have to be street smart because when we come, when we come out here, uh, we meet a whole different, uh, we get a whole different perspective of life. So it's really good to support your children. And also when they are doing the thing and they, they remember that their parents support them, they'll always be doing it to, uh, twice better to make you proud. A few weeks ago, I got an invite uh, to go to South Sudan ahead of a big project that I'll be willing, uh, that I'll be sharing with you guys after the break. So stay tuned. A few months ago, I got a follower on, Insta on Instagram who loved my conservation work and always sent me positive messages encouraging me and telling me that you're really doing good in conservation. I'm so proud of you. Because I share, I, I share my number always. When someone asks for my number on the DM, I always share my number so that people could at least um, engage because it could be something positive. So I got a call and, um, hi Anita, how are you? We are so proud of what you're doing. And South Sudan is planning to plant 100 million trees. I love your work, I appreciate your work. If you don't mind, you could come to South Sudan so that you can see how the planning is and even see how the environment here is. So, uh, after a few minutes, I had a ticket already and I had everything sorted, accommodation and all that, and that's how I went to South Sudan. And when I was there, I got to uh, visit different uh, offices in relation to conservation. And I'd say I've built a family where I can call someone in one of the environmental offices in South Sudan and I'd maybe be seeking for advice or maybe sharing ideas and they really listen to me. Sometimes when you feel like maybe even back here at home, it could be hard to access some of these offices, but you're getting a direct call from outside the country because people appreciate your work. It's something I don't take for granted. And uh, this is someone I'll never forget in my life. Uh, his name is Bola Book. He's really someone that I will always treasure because uh, of the respect and the, and the I, I, sometimes I feel like he believed in me more than I even believed in myself. When I was really starting, uh, I was young, naive, 
And I'd say the mistakes I made in this journey is that sometimes I got discouraged and I really accepted uh, to, to really uh, be completely low. There are sometimes I got discouraged from people I, wo I was with, the friends and all those things. And I I'd allow that to really stress me for even a week, two weeks. And there's a time, there, there's a time I really didn't even function for almost four months because of the things that I was going through. Uh, and I think it's something that I wouldn't want any other person to go. Whenever you're just not okay, try and pick up the positive that life gives you. And I'm one person who really wants to see everybody around me growing. But sometimes I want to I want to take people with me to the top, but they're not even happy to see me at the top. So it's really very wise to to drop uh, to drop people the way you drop things. Just drop anything that's not that's not allowing you to grow, never focus on it, because that's a very big mistake that can make you start uh, from zero. I'm one person who doesn't love reading books. That's so ironic because I've written a book, it's called The Green War. But this time when, uh, when the COVID, uh, when we had the COVID cases being reported for the first time in Kenya, so I just decided to do something. I really didn't start it as a book. I used to write stories. So this time I have a new website and I'm writing articles for my website. And also when I was writing the book, I felt like um, I needed to write a book that is not voluminous. A lot of conservation books are so big that if you're not really interested in conservation, you may not be interested to read a voluminous book. So I wrote a small book that um, Okay, everybody who's read the book tell me that uh, when they read the book, they find themselves like, like they can be able to fit in my shoe. They're able to understand why I'm fighting f uh, for, for a better planet. They're able to understand why climate change is an issue. And they're able to see it from our perspective. writing my first book and after reading other books I'm thinking of just continuing to do that but I don't really want to go into writing so much I'm working on something that's going to be amazing I'm working on a book that's being will be illustrated in Germany it's a very good uh, it's a good project that will involve children uh, since right now I have a mentee she she just turned nine the other day and she really loves nature and is someone who, who can influence other children. I feel I felt the need to do a children's project so that even if I stopped from there, I'd have covered both sides. One thing, I've, one thing that I've learned as an individual or, or in just life is that uh, you need to learn to accommodate people and I also try and make sure that everybody around me grow. I'm not that kind of uh, jealous person who doesn't want to see my friends grow. It's something that I tell them every day. Uh, one thing I've learned in the conservation journey is that uh, it's always me and you versus the, the, the problem. I'd say us versus climate change. It's, but we have a lot of me versus you issues in conservation where people really want to, like people have tried to politicize it. It's so sad that now people are having internal fights that, you know, I need to get these opportunities alone. People are so selfish in sharing opportunities. People find it like it's all about I want to be the best. But we then forget that we are all fighting one problem, which is climate change and uh, I'd say climate crisis. Working with young people uh, in conservation is really not easy because many people are still not understanding the importance of maybe uh, being part of this, uh, of this movement. And other people are really interested in showbiz and other things that maybe entertain them. And you know conservation may not be entertaining as such. It's something that if you really don't like it, you may find it boring. And trying to convince someone that you know this is what you're supposed to do and especially volunteering, it's really not easy. As a person who's not going to class to study environment conservation, I have a lot of uh, tasks uh, because also my team is made up of people who have not gone to class. It's, uh, I have 
um, I'd say I have a lot of work because I need to go on the internet, I have to read a lot, I have to understand terminologies, I have to be familiar with a lot of things. Something that we do it together, we learn and we always spare at least uh, one weekend a month to spend together, the whole weekend to spend together with the team, uh, the committee team and just educate ourselves and plan on how we are going to teach the rest as well. So we normally have watch parties at home where we watch documentaries at my place. We watch documentaries every, every um, like every month. We must watch a documentary on conservation. Uh, in our WhatsApp group, we have uh, lessons three days in a week. We have what we call planting Mondays, we have Wise Wednesdays, and we have Fun Fact Fridays, where every day we learn different things. We could be teaching people about the different uh, sustainable development goals. We could be teaching people about plants. We could be teaching people about water. Just something that can make people, uh, it's something fun and people get so much engaged. Yeah. We've been able to get support from different people, uh, from different people who are coming from different parts of the country and different parts of the world. This is through the selling of our merchandise, like this one here, this is one of the merchandise that we have. Uh, we sell them online and we ship to different parts of the world and that's how we get people, we get to at least raise funds for our projects. Uh, we've also gotten support from uh, UMI Fund that has really uh, ensured that we are able to train coordinators from different counties so that we can also be able to have activities outside Nairobi running every other day. And we also have a till number that people often just contribute to it. We have a system called Adopt a Tree at 100 shillings. So people normally contribute to it. And one big uh, source of contribution or I say source of income that we have in our team uh, is what we call happy and sad dollars where at the end of the week if you are happy about something in relation to the environment, if maybe something made you happy, you contribute a happy dollar to the kitty. If there's something that made you sad, like during the, the destruction of the trees are along uh, Waiyaki Way for the expressway, we had a lot of sad dollars that uh, we raised from people and that's how we were able to, to even do our tree orchards programs in school. As young people, when you're trying to push and at least achieve something in life, we normally go wrong where somebody wants to start something today and tomorrow they want to be successful. We do not appreciate steps, we do not appreciate that it's a journey, it's not a destination. We do not appreciate that there are staircases and we need to just climb each staircase to get to the top. I think that's where most young people go wrong and they get discouraged so easily and swayed easily. I'd say there's a, a lot of, um, I don't like using the term peer pressure, but let me just say uh, negative peer pressure where you get so swayed easily and then you lose track, you lose focus and you end up not really doing that thing that you wanted to pursue. How many trees I've planted is something I even do not know how to answer normally. Because uh, looking at uh, many people, they love to put the hype in the number of trees they've planted. Someone will tell you I plant, I've planted one million trees but they really don't know about their survival rate. So we normally count it as what we have done as a team and as an organization. So for us, we normally do that uh, like a census, sort of, at the end of the year. If we planted 300 trees and 100 survive, we don't write that we have 300 trees done. We write 100 or 150. So I'd, I'd say by last year, December, we had done about 3,000 plus trees. And after the year, we are going to have more trees, and I'm sure by the end of the year, we'll be somewhere 5,000 plus. Earth, which is a home to all of us, is supposed to be beautiful, but our actions have made it ugly. A mother having 10 children, with nine of them is treat her, can be compared to the number of the people responsible for the planet's destruction versus the few people struggling to protect it. In conservation, we don't need one person doing things a million ways. We need one million people doing things in their own small ways. So, you know, even speaking about something is really helpful. If today they dedicate planting uh, 
trees or their birthdays. It's something that I was, I've been doing since I was, uh, I was turning 19 and it's, it's something that many people do. If we all could just dedicate our time to planting trees during our birthdays, it could be something. I mean, you could be having a lot of trees. Imagine you're turning 20 and then you plant 20 trees or, some, or even just a tree. It's something that can help. And also trying to avoid single-use plastic uh, that we can avoid. We have plastic pollution that's affecting the marine life. Something people do not understand that uh, water bodies are also acting as great carbon sinks. Now that we are not, uh, the, right now where we are as a, as a country or maybe as a continent or as a world, we're still having a lot of carbon emissions, so we need enough carbon sinks. If we are not speaking against deforestation, if we are not trying to avoid single-use plastic, we are not trying to stop pollution, it's going to be hard. My favorite social media platform, it can't be one of course, it has to be more, I'd say Instagram is one of them. Instagram is like my office, now, I don't have, now that I don't have the capacity to have a physical office, Instagram has been able to come through for me, it's where I document everything and also LinkedIn is a very uh, good platform that has also uh, opened a lot of opportunities for me. And another platform I think is Facebook. Since I have a verification on Facebook, it make, makes my work so authentic and at least I can, I can, com I, I can have a voice. Uh, Twitter is also a good platform. So I'd say almost all social media platforms are, are really good for me. WhatsApp is another place. It's where we have our office, where we discuss everything, where we all meet. One thing that people do not know about me is that I'm so emotional. <laughs> I cry a lot. Whenever something is disturbing me, I have to cry it out. And even in these conservation things, I have cried a lot. And whenever I feel like I'm doing zero work, you're doing a lot of work and nothing is happening, I just have to cry it out. To young people, I really think that uh, we are the leaders of today and tomorrow and it's up to us to really push for change. You could also be sitting at home just complaining and then there's someone who's trying to at least be part of the change. So as young people always go for your dreams, as long as it's something that's not harming anybody, it's not harming the society, it's not harming the country, try and push and believe in it. Don't let anyone discourage you. Don't uh, lose focus on the way, keep doing it. My social media handles are Anita Soina on LinkedIn, Anita Soina on Facebook, same on Twitter, and on Instagram is Anita underscore Soina. Also for our organization, you can find it at Spies Warriors on all social media platforms. Then to order my book or to get to engage one-on-one, -on -one, just reach me out on social media or you can check my website, anitasoina.com, where you can be able to schedule an appointment and we can have a call and then we can discuss on how you can get your, your book, your hoodies and other merchandise that we'll be launching before the end of the week.